Lab 3 consists of four tasks that all require the use of distance sensors. There are several on the robot, but we're just going to be working with the left, right, and front sensors, which I'll be printing out continuously for each one of these tasks. The motor velocity is going to be decided by a proportional control function that I'll use the sensor readings to decide things like when to stop or turn or slow down. Um, all the tasks are going to use the concept, so I'll go over that a little bit first. So here's a PID controller. Uh, it has a proportional, an integral, and a derivative component. Luckily for this lab, we're just going to be using this P component here. Um, R, T is the desired distance. So for task 1, for example, my desired distance from the wall is going to be 10 inches and Y is the distance that the sensors are reading at the moment. E is the distance error, which you get by subtracting Y from R, and then you run that through the P controller, which takes your distance error and multiplies it by your proportional gain KP. Uh, that decides the new velocity U, and then sometimes this U value is nowhere near what your motor can handle, so you run that new velocity through a saturation function that will end up giving you a value your robot can handle. So my saturation function, for example, says something like, whatever this new velocity is, if it's over 2 pi, then just make it 2 pi. Um, and that way the motor can run it. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that, but let's keep this rolling. Task 1 is a simple straight line drive that will use PID to slow down as it approaches 10 inches from the wall. These red lasers are our three sensors. The lasers will turn green once they hit something, so these left and right sensors will go green pretty much immediately. Down here I'll print the three sensor readings, and um, I'll include some prints on what's actually going on with the proportional controller as it runs. Because this distance sensor is going to read way higher than the 10 inches, initially the control function is going to ask for some pretty ridiculous speeds that the EPUC cannot handle. So it'll saturate down to 6.2 weight, and you'll see a little note about that as well down here. So we got the left, front, and right sensors. The proportional gain I chose is 2.5, and you'll see it's getting closer to 10 as we go. The robot never actually reaches 10 inches exactly because of how the proportional controller works, but it zigzags back and forth pretty damn close. Um, that zigzagging is important note because the next tasks, rather than staying at exactly the distance we want from the sidewalls, it's always got like a left or right pull. See it starts at 50 and as it gets closer that distance error gets lower velocity reaches pretty close to zero. Task 2 uses proportional control to move down the same hall while also keeping its distance from the sidewalls. We're trying to keep them 2.5 to 5.5 inches from the sides and you'll see the left and right tug because I'm applying the same control function values to the two side sensors at the same time. I'll also print the sensor values here, just like before, along with some of the function stuff. Task 3 has a corridor with a couple of turns for us to maneuver around. It's using the same proportional control as before, with a couple minor tweaks as I've been experimenting. I've got smoother pulls now to the left and right, since I just prioritize the left wall now when I'm wall following. Um, but this also makes it a little bit faster going counterclockwise versus clockwise. You'll see what I mean. 
Um, whenever the robot reaches a wall, it's just going to spin 90 degrees to the side and keep on chugging on. So I'm going to start this one going clockwise. And you'll see it still zigzags left and right. And we have the print for the readings on the bottom there. Once it hits this wall, it'll turn 90 degrees and keep pushing forward. And since it turns right 90 degrees whenever the right sensor is larger than the left sensor, we're going to face it the other way and it should, in theory, turn left when it hits a wall. So because it prioritizes the left sensor, it's going to do a quicker circle um, than if it was following around this white wall. But because that left sensor is a larger reading, it spins 90 degree left than right. Finally, we have task four. Um, this one has a maze here that I don't fully understand and haven't spent too much time on, but we're going to try to keep this from hitting walls again with our same old control functions. So, thanks for watching, I guess, and have fun watching me fail this part and fast forward.